SpaceX just shocked the world. Ship 37's back on pad after engine swap, but they're refusing to do static fire. This is insane. New engines installed, pad ready, closures scheduled. But SpaceX is doing the opposite of their proven playbook. They booked 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. instead of normal 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. windows, and the engines are missing critical safety parts. Are they about to make the biggest mistake in Starship history? Or is this a genius move that puts flight 10 weeks ahead of schedule? Let's dive right in. Here's what happened at exactly 11 a.m. on August 11th that sent shockwaves through the space industry. Ship 37 rolled out of Mega Bay two right on schedule. Chopsticks grabbed it. Stabilizer arms locked. Everything looked textbook normal until someone noticed the beach closure times. 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. Every SpaceX engineer on the planet knows static fires happen 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Always, no exceptions. Daylight operations for maximum safety and documentation. So why did they flip their most sacred protocol completely upside down? Then the image leaked. The one that made veteran rocket engineers question everything they thought they knew about SpaceX. Those brand new vacuum engines, the ones SpaceX spent weeks installing, were missing their stiffeners. Think of stiffeners as the safety harness on a bungee jump. Without them, firing those engines at full power would be like removing the brakes from a Formula One car before a race. This wasn't an oversight. This was intentional. But here's the part that'll blow your mind. SpaceX scheduled the closure anyway. They moved a 5,000-ton rocket to the pad, knowing they couldn't fire those engines. So what the hell were they planning? The timing tells a story nobody expected. Night operations create stunning visuals. Imagine Raptor engines glowing against the Texas darkness, but they destroy visibility for safety crews and documentation teams. SpaceX, the company that films every bolt turn, chose darkness over safety protocols. Why? Because this isn't about testing engines. It's about something far more dangerous and revolutionary. Industry insiders are whispering three theories. Spin prime test, spinning turbines without ignition, cryogenic proofing, super cold fuel testing seals, integration validation, system communication tests. Each bypasses the traditional static fire entirely. But here's the terrifying part. SpaceX is betting their entire timeline on untested integration procedures. For 20 years, SpaceX followed one unbreakable rule. Install, static fire, fly. It built their reputation. It kept astronauts alive. It made them the most trusted name in space. Now they're throwing that rule book into the fire. The pressure is crushing. Flight 10 must launch before August ends or the entire version 3 program collapses. Every day of delay pushes back their commitment to fly V3 before December 31st. So SpaceX made a calculation that's either genius or catastrophic. Skip the test that's kept them safe for two decades. But what if this isn't reckless? What if it's the smartest move they've ever made? Here's what the critics are missing. SpaceX has already proven these engines work. Hundreds of ground tests, computer simulations, standalone engine fires. The engines aren't the variable. The real question is integration. Do the new engines talk to Ship 37's computers? Do connections work properly? Are there interface issues between old and new systems? These questions don't need a static fire. They need engines to spin up, receive commands, and respond correctly. Like testing if your new iPhone connects to your car before driving cross-country. This strategy could be revolutionary. Validate everything needed for flight without risking damage from high-stress testing. But there's a catch. While everyone focuses on Ship 37, SpaceX is executing a shadow strategy that changes everything. Inside Mega Bay 2, Ship 37's departure created massive space. Exactly what they need for Starship version 3 construction? The timing isn't coincidence. Ship 39 will be the first V3 vehicle. It needs to fly before year end. Four months to build, test, and launch an entirely new generation. Production photos show eight V3 nose cones lined up like bullets in a chamber. Ship 39's nose already has thermal protection. Ships 40, 41, 42 have attachment pins fitted. 
This isn't preparation. This is acceleration of the most ambitious program in aerospace history. But it all depends on Flight 10 succeeding with current generation hardware. Booster 16 sits in Rocket Garden like a loaded weapon, ready for immediate pad rotation. The moment Ship 37 testing completes, that booster moves to launch position. Every hour of delay ripples through the entire schedule. If SpaceX's gamble works, Booster 16 could be launching within days. If it fails and they need traditional static fire testing, Flight 10 slides into September or October. That would compress V3 timeline to nearly impossible schedules. The stakes couldn't be higher. While SpaceX revolutionizes testing procedures, competitors are struggling with basic operations. Amazon's Kuiper just hit 102 satellites, their first time crossing 100. Sounds impressive until you realize Starlink has over 5,000 operational satellites. Amazon needs 3,200 for full constellation. They're 3% complete. Blue Origin's New Glenn keeps sliding. ULA's Vulcan returned after 10-month delays. Ariane 6 faces ongoing problems. This forces Amazon into an uncomfortable reality, depending on competitor SpaceX for launches while trying to compete with Starlink. SpaceX hit 100 launches in 2025 by mid-August. Most space agencies celebrate 10 launches annually. SpaceX averages over one every three days. SpaceX targets 170 plus launches in 2025. Last year, 138 total, including 132 Falcon 9, two Falcon Heavy, four Starship tests. They're not maintaining pace, they're accelerating. This creates massive competitive advantage. While others prepare single missions for months, SpaceX treats launches like airline flights. Routine, frequent, reliable. But here's the twist that changes Ship 37's entire strategy. SpaceX isn't just maintaining schedules. They're racing to prove Starship readiness for NASA's Artemis moon program. Every successful flight moves them closer to crew certification. Artemis timeline doesn't wait for perfect test procedures. NASA needs consistent performance demonstrations before committing astronaut lives. Flight 10 and 11 are critical proof points that Starship handles complex missions reliably. This explains SpaceX's modified testing approach. Traditional methods take longer but aren't necessarily more effective for current validation needs. They've proven engines work. Now they need system integration confirmation, calculated risk with enormous potential rewards, SpaceX's strategy shift sends shockwaves through aerospace. If accelerated testing succeeds, it revolutionizes rocket development validation. Traditional companies spend years on test protocols, repeating identical procedures for maximum safety margins. SpaceX proves intelligent risk management plus rapid iteration achieves better results faster. ULA's Vulcan demonstrates the contrast. After nearly a year delay from minor booster issues, Vulcan rolled to pad with four solid boosters instead of two. Extended downtime highlights how traditional approaches increase program risk through schedule delays and lost momentum. SpaceX launches every few days while developing next-generation vehicles simultaneously. Operational tempo difference is staggering. Ship 37's testing strategy directly accelerates version 3 development. Every lesson feeds into V3 vehicle design and validation procedures. Version 3 promises revolutionary improvements, enhanced heat shields, upgraded engines, better propellant management, increased payload capacity. First, V3 must demonstrate these convincingly for future contracts. SpaceX beta tests new development approaches on Ship 37 before applying to V3 program. Success compresses V3 testing from months to weeks, enabling faster iteration cycles. This turns every current mission into R&D for future capabilities. So here we stand, watching SpaceX execute their most unconventional strategy ever. New engines without safety equipment, testing during suboptimal hours, abandoned proven protocols. Are they making the biggest mistake in Starship history or pioneering rocket development's future? The answer hinges on whether integration tests provide sufficient flight clearance data. Success validates that aerospace tradition might be overly conservative. Failure forces return to traditional testing, adding weeks to compress schedules. This decision affects far more than Flight 10. Booster 18 awaits V3 testing with new quick disconnect systems. 
Ship 39 construction depends on current lessons. The entire 2026 flight schedule hangs in balance. Success validates new approaches and accelerates everything following. Failure compresses all downstream timelines. SpaceX built their reputation on calculated risks others wouldn't attempt. Landing boosters on drone ships, catching them with mechanical arms, consistently proving unconventional approaches deliver extraordinary results. Now they're applying that philosophy to testing procedures. The question isn't whether they're taking risks, it's whether those risks justify potential rewards. With Flight 10 potentially launching before August ends, Booster 16 ready for immediate rotation and Version 3 development accelerating rapidly, SpaceX bets their entire timeline on the strategy shift. In less than 48 hours, we'll know if SpaceX's gamble pays off. If Ship 37's integration test provides sufficient data, they've just revolutionized rocket testing forever. If not, they'll need to swallow their pride, return to traditional static fire procedures, and explain to NASA why their moon rocket is running behind schedule. Either way, the space industry will never be the same. So here's what we just witnessed. SpaceX didn't just skip a test. They potentially rewrote the rules of rocket development forever. From missing stiffeners to nighttime operations, every shocking decision reveals a calculated strategy that could either accelerate humanity to Mars or set them back months. But here's what I'm really curious about. If this approach works, what other sacred rules in aerospace are actually just outdated traditions? The next few days will determine whether we're watching genius or madness unfold at Starbase. I'll be tracking every development, so make sure you're subscribed, because this story is far from over. What do you think? Is SpaceX's bold strategy the future of rocket testing, or are they playing with fire? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment. The countdown to answers has already begun. The June 18th explosion at Massey didn't just destroy Ship 36, it revealed SpaceX's most shocking secret. While everyone expected months of delays, SpaceX was already planning something that would make competitors panic. The accident became their fastest path to Starship Block 3. But here's the real shock. What they found in the wreckage changes everything we know about their timeline. This isn't just recovery, it's revolution. Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody saw coming. That devastating June 18th explosion at Massey wasn't just an accident. It was SpaceX's wake-up call that saved them from a much bigger disaster. While Ship 36 burned in the Texas sky, SpaceX engineers were already uncovering something that would shock even Elon Musk himself. The blast happened at exactly 7.23 p.m. during what should have been routine propellant loading. But here's the twist. The explosion pattern revealed structural flaws that ground tests had completely missed. Flaws that could have killed astronauts during actual flights. Within 48 hours, SpaceX made a decision that stunned the aerospace world. Instead of rebuilding Massey exactly as it was, they would use this disaster to leapfrog directly to Block 3 capabilities. But why was this explosion so valuable? And what did they discover in those twisted metal fragments? Here's where the story gets insane. While everyone mourned the loss of Ship 36, SpaceX engineers were celebrating. Why? Because that explosion had just performed the most expensive stress test in rocket history, and it revealed exactly what they needed to know. The blast wave, the debris pattern, every twisted beam told a story. The explosion had essentially run a destructive analysis that would have taken months to simulate. Each failed component provided crucial data about failure modes and stress concentrations that no computer model could predict. But here's the real shock. The explosion exposed weaknesses not just in Ship 36, but in their entire Block 2 design philosophy. The way the quick disconnect system failed, how the methane tank farm ruptured, the sequence of destruction, it all pointed to fundamental issues that would have cost billions in future failures. SpaceX realized they had just received the world's most expensive lesson in rocket engineering, and they weren't going to waste it. 
Industry experts predicted Massey wouldn't be operational until Christmas 2025. SpaceX had other plans. Teams worked around the clock, not just to repair damage, but to install completely new systems designed for vehicles that didn't even exist yet. The first sign of their ambitious plan appeared in early August. Two version three booster quick disconnects arrived at the facility. These weren't replacements. They were upgrades for Block 3 starships. But here's what nobody understood at the time. SpaceX was rebuilding Massey, not for current vehicles, but for the future. Why take such a massive risk? Because they had realized something terrifying. The explosion had shown them that their current approach was fundamentally flawed. They needed to skip an entire generation of development to avoid catastrophic failures down the line. While everyone focused on the destruction, SpaceX was quietly implementing their most important innovation, a complete elimination of Raptor quick disconnects. The new version 3 system uses separate connections for fuel and oxidizer, similar to Falcon 9's proven design. Think about it. Imagine trying to quickly disconnect 33 garden hoses under extreme pressure in freezing conditions with millimeter precision. That's what the old system required. The new design eliminates this nightmare entirely. But here's the secret weapon. This change alone could cut turnaround time from days to hours. The explosion forced SpaceX to rebuild anyway, so why not rebuild it better? The damaged Massey site became the perfect testbed for revolutionary improvements. This wasn't just an upgrade. It was a complete reimagination of how rockets could be serviced and reused. The real battle wasn't against time. It was against physics itself. The new cryogenic systems must handle propellants at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, metals become brittle, seals fail catastrophically, and even tiny leaks can cause explosions. The explosion had revealed stress points that had been accumulating for months. Microfractures, thermal cycling damage, metal fatigue, problems that only become visible under extreme conditions. The blast had essentially performed a failure analysis that would have taken years to complete normally. The new cryogenic test stands incorporate lessons learned not just from the explosion, but from every static fire test ever conducted at